Um, uh, yes, but I might nuance it a little bit now. Okay. Uh, my name is Simone Spray. I run a charity called Forty Second Street in Manchester, which is a mental health charity for young people. Um, you know all about us already. Um, you're more than welcome to come visit us if you want to. We, I, I think we are a charity that does what you're talking about in, in, on a small scale in terms of integrating health and social care for young people. My question um, was about knowing that there are inequalities in the system and, and recognition that the evolution is trying to tackle that in terms of inequality. How you, will you make sure that there is a, a proper um, inclusion agenda around how the economic well-being of the, of the whole conurbation reaches some of those most vulnerable people? And I guess the nuance of my question now is, um, although you've mentioned mental health a lot and you've mentioned children, what about adolescent mental health? And how would you engage and support young people in their mental health, um, if you were there? Andy, do you want to go first? Okay, thanks, Martin. Okay, well... A couple of things to say about that. Let me just start with your last point about children's mental health. I mean, as I said, it's a scandal. How do you get the resources to those kids who need it? The way I would do it, I've already said this, I would set a clear pledge that no child in Greater Manchester would be turned away for mental health support. And that would make sure, if you had a very clear pledge like that, that the money would then transfer. And people would say, well, how can you afford it? I would say, how, how can we not afford to do that, given what we know if you don't uh, help young people uh, deal with those, uh, those issues at that, at that age. But the broader point you're making is, is about how, you're saying how do we deal with those in, entrenched inequalities and get money where it's really needed. And here's the second policy. I would have a very huge focus on school readiness because all of the evidence, all of the evidence that we received as a government over many years, particularly the Marmot report, which was given to me towards the end of the last government, tells you, and Debbie Abrams has been kind of absolutely leading advocate of, of, of this. If you invest in the first thousand days of life, that is the best investment that you can make. And if you seriously want to change the course of a life, that is where the money must go. And the measure for that is, of course, school readiness. You know, when kids arrive in reception class, are they ready to learn? Do they have the social skills to interact with the other kids? Can they look after themselves? Can they eat properly? All of those things. In my constituency, my borough, a third of kids arrive at school not school ready. In parts of Greater Manchester, it's 70%. 70%. Those kids never, ever catch up. Never. So if you really want to change those things, if you really want to get money to the communities where the biggest, most entrenched problems are, set that policy of all kids school ready by age four, because then the money will go to the areas where the biggest problems uh, exist. And that is how uh, I would go about ch tackling the issues that you raise. Okay. The first, I'll deal directly with your question. We have a trickle-down economic model in Greater Manchester, which is not a labour model. If you invest in this city centre and the buildings go up, then somehow you get social justice and all parts of Greater Manchester and the poorest and most vulnerable benefit. I am scandalised by what I have found. That is the model that we have. There is a disconnect between economic growth and social justice. Now, my focus on saying, I will define Greater Manchester being world-class not by the cranes in the sky, but people coming from all over the world to say we are reducing inequality here and this is how we're doing it. That changes the game overnight by saying that political leadership says the definition of being world class is reduction of inequality. Overnight. That is the big picture vision that really, really matters. And we do not have a progressive uh, vision for Greater Manchester. There's been a series of devolution deals, which is George Osborne's vision of devolution, but worse than that, that we do not believe as a party from a values point in trickle-down economics and we need to change it. On the question of adolescence, we all know about self-harm. We all know about the shocking way that care leavers are treated. Uh, we all know the fact that with academisation, the fragmentation of the school system is making it increasingly difficult to have holistic policies around prevention and support for young people. And we know that the ending of things like mentors and all the rest of it has made a, a, real, a, a real difference. So, so my view is that you would have to set out um, a, a situation where we agreed with schools a very different approach to the way that they work with young people. And we would have to seek to get agreement. I agree with Andy on early years. Uh, on the, and, and I think that despite the fact that Shore Start and Children's Centres are being cut, what I would seek to do is get the 10 Greater Manchester leaders to say this. If we had one or two priorities, it would be the earliest years where you make the most difference in a child's life. My second choice would be mental health. And to say that despite all of the financial pressures and all of the cuts, uh, those should be our top two priorities. 
Because if we don't make them our priorities, we know they will continue to be the Cinderella service. And I'm fed up of hearing the term Cinderella service. How many times are we as Labour politicians going to sit around rooms talking about mental health and adolescent services being Cinderella? It's about time we did something about it. Tony. Thanks. Yeah, I am reminded actually, Simone, that 42nd Street was battling against Labour governments for resources as well as Conservative governments. And it's important we say that because actually um, you don't need the road to Damascus. You need to recognise that this, this was always something of, of, of real importance. Look, there are a number of things. Don't disagree with a lot of what uh, Andy and, and Adam both said. Um, we've got something called the, the Greater Manchester Reform Board, which is bringing together all our public agencies, not simply health. Um, local authorities across the whole gamut of things because if we're going to change the way we deliver we've got to have people round the table at the strategic level to, to move through to the delivery system. Actually I'm not saying this because you're here, I didn't know that you would be here. Um, Simone actually is a member of that reform board because one of the things we've got to recognise is that where we've we failed in the past, particularly in terms of, of issues around children's and adolescent uh, mental health breakdown, was that we didn't work properly with the voluntary, sector, the voluntary community sector and we're changing that, which is why that sector is sat in the reform board because we've got to have their voice heard. We've got to have them as part of the partnership that begins to deliver. If we are going to deliver um, in terms of, of those early interventions, what, one, of, one of the issues through this reform board, we, we've already got effectively now a strategic plan working through the, the old fashioned expression, which is the right one, from the cradle to the grave. In actual fact, we've got to go before the cradle. We've got to work with the, the pregnant mother uh, in, in, in those pre-early years. We've got to walk with them through, because if we're going to change the kind of things you've, you've heard of, of course, that's the level at which you've got, got to operate. We work all the way through. So issues like uh, dementia, not only an issue for older people, but certainly an issue where disproportionately older people are there. Dementia becomes a priority. I don't think we just have two priorities. We've got to prioritise a whole range of things that are life transforming. Certainly in terms of adolescent mental health services, um, actually working across the, the city region with those, uh, those organisations and structures which are delivering there matters enormously because we've got to have practical delivery systems. It's not just, and you're right, Ivan, not just about having wonderful strategies. It's got to be a delivery system that translates those into practice, and that matters. We've got, in particular, to say, and this comes back to Paul's first question, um, to make sure that there can't be now the little empires that, that fight for those resources. Actually, that's why we've got all the hospitals around the, around the same table. That's why we've got the CCGs, the funding structures. We will use the system, wrong system that was set up in terms of how we allocate resources in health, but we'll use that system here in Greater Manchester to our advantage to take out the competition, to take out the little barony uh, structures and, and begin to make sure we're moving the resource in the direction of early intervention, which is cheaper and actually humanly more effective. <laughs>